Well, as an English and history teacher, figures have never been my strong point. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping I'll, I'll get by with the figures today. But uh, fingers crossed for that one. Obviously, you know, Gavin is the dragon who's been there from the very start, so he would be the one that maybe I'd have grown up listening to. So, uh, yeah, maybe Gavin or even Barry, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm going to listen to all dragons and hopefully uh, I'd be fair to them all. Hello, dragons. My name is Paul Kelly, founder of homeschool.ie, Ireland's online secondary school. Today I'm here to ask for €60,000 for 10% of my business. During my time as an educator, I have always been aware of students who are unable to attend school due to illness, sickness, or for a wide variety of different reasons. This concern was heightened for me in recent years when a family member spent a long period of time in hospital. There I saw firsthand students who are unable to access proper teacher support and a proper educational experience. At the time, I was studying for a master's in e-learning in DCU, and I decided that I wanted to, be, to connect these young people with the best teachers in the country through an online platform. Welcome Dragons here to your Dragons Den special of Leaving Certificate Maths at homeschool.ee. But at the end of today's lesson, what we want you to be able to do is make a financially beneficial investment. So, in 2016, we're aiming for €148,500. Hopefully we've helped you along with making a financially beneficial investment. Paul is seeking €60,000 for a 10% share in homeschool.ie. It's an online teaching platform that gives junior and leaving certificate students access to video lessons from the comfort and safety of their own home. But it's the own home element that Barry wants to focus on first. The problem with online courses is you're watching them on your mobile device, you're watching them on your computer, and the way teenagers interact is online. So. You're there looking at your maths class and you, Snapchat is popping up and Instagram's popping up and WhatsApp is popping up, Facebook Messenger's popping up. It's completely distracting. I can't help if a student, taking one of my lessons, takes out their phones or, and, and you know, Snapchat someone about something else. But see, the thing is, they don't even have to take out their phones. They're looking at it on their computer and the notification comes up in the corner of the screen. That's the tricky part. How do you stop that distraction? Well, one of the things we would encourage when our students are taking their weekly lesson is actually getting parental and guardian involvement in the process. So we would say, take your computer down to a public space in your living room or your study room, and we're actually encouraging the parents and guardians to supervise the, 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 the student as they study. But the actual work they do, that nobody checks that. There's no, no, there's, we, there's no follow up. It's up to the student to do it or not do it. It's, up to, the, it's, it's up to the student. With each subject costing 99 euro and Paul suggesting students are supervised during learning, Eleanor wants to know how homeschool.ie intends to compete with the more traditional and established grinds market. How have schools reacted to it? In other words, parents will go to teachers and say, my child needs a grind, who would you recommend? Well, uh, most of them don't know we exist. Your first protocol is to go to the headmasters and head teachers in the, in the schools, show it to them and say, this is an option. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's, a, that's an area of the business that I just haven't explored. I mean, I've, I've really just, in terms of marketing, we, we, we've done nothing. But Paul, any product, no matter how good it is without customers, it doesn't work. So exactly. getting customers is your number one. Exactly. Well, I think it's a fantastic concept. I think the whole grind school scenario has, has ruled out so many kids because they can't afford it, and I think that's plain wrong. So anything that democratizes the additional help for students that need it, I think, is, is a really positive thing. Have you any competitors out there, even globally, that you're aware of? I mean, there are lots of different platforms, and when I was designing it, I mean, I tried to research as many of them uh, as I could, but I, I didn't see anywhere where they had this idea of just, you know, connecting just with the teacher, and again, you're in a classroom of one, and again, a set of, set of notes and interactive notes and, and teacher support from that teacher. Why did you pick the um, subscription model for the pricing? You know, other platforms like Khan Academy are free, and uh, I guess they, they're monetized through advertising and so on. 
How do you know that 99 euros is the right price? I felt we could get users on, on board and it's built to expand. And uh, I felt at 99 euro, we could make that accessible. It was a feeling. Yeah. Did, did I, you I test mean, any different prices maybe with? No, we, we, we maybe flirted with the idea of, of going for 149 euro. You know, it was a, it was a group decision on the part of the, the entire staff. The Dragons have uncovered some flaws in Paul's business structure for homeschool.ie. But is his passion to deliver an alternative schooling option enough, or is the risk too high? Paul, I'll, I'll tell you where I'm at. Um, I think you're starting on a very exciting journey, but I think in your own words, it's going to be a steep learning curve. Um, I don't think it's one that I can really help you with. I know you're going to continue. You've got great enthusiasm, but, but I'm out. Thanks a minute. Thank you. Paul, I have to tell you, as somebody who's started multiple businesses, I have never in my life given a presentation to anyone looking for funding without proving that I could attain customers. So for me, you're too early. Uh, if you don't concentrate on that part, it will stay a concept. But I wish you well, so for me, I'm out. Thank you. I'm not sure what I can add directly to, to the sector that you're involved in, because it's not something business-wise that I've been involved in, in the education sphere. Uh, I wish you the best. I, I really do think it will fly. Thank you. Um, but unfortunately, I'm out. Thanks a million. Thank you. Paul's preferred dragons of Barry and Gavin are the only two remaining. Thankfully for him, they want to know more about homeschool.ie. Paul, can you go through your projections for the next three years? In 2016, uh, our aim is to sell 1,500 courses. 2017, we want to increase that to 5,000 courses. For 2018, we want to sell 10,000 courses. How many do you have taking homeschool.ie courses at the moment? Okay, so we have over 100 students. Over 100, is that 103, 110? <clears throat> it is 102. 102. When did you launch? Uh, we, our first weekly lesson went up the last week of September. And so in, in like four months, you've got 100 students. That's a long way off target. You're 86% off target at the moment, which are 102. Well, I would just say it's, it's not surprising. We met as a teacher, uh, as a group of teachers at the start of the year, and we had the ambitious sales projection that if we help one family, uh, that we, uh, homeschool would be a success. So I, I just wanted to throw that one in there. Um, <laughs> but no. Um, and your accountant told you not yeah, to say yeah, that yeah, to yeah, the investors. Yeah. I didn't even know an accountant up until relatively recently. So um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's where we are. I mean, I can only go on what the teachers are telling me and what the students are telling me. We are so excited. We just feel we're on the edge of something here. The problem is with the marketing gap in your skill set. Like if you had come in and said, well, we've spent a little bit on advertising and we've done a little bit of social media. But when you kind of say, we feel that it will work, we feel very passionate about it, that's great. But some data would be better. Yeah, of course. So that's what I'm struggling with. Yeah. I know how it feels. <laughs> Barry needs more time, but is Gavin about to teach him a lesson? Barry, if it helps, uh, because I would like to do a joint investment with you, but I'm going alone if I do go on this one. So it's either compete or, or die. There's no way I'd go into this one with you, Gavin. <laughs> then it's uh, pistols at dawn. So, Paul, I'm going to make you an offer, and the offer is for the uh, full amount of €60,000 for 39%. The significance of the 39% is, A, there's an awful lot of work involved here. This is all about the marketing, so you just don't need my money, you need my time. Uh, you need a big effort here. Gavin has offered the full amount, but he wants 29% more than Paul is offering. Did you bring a pillow with you, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you an offer. I'll match Gavin's offer. I'll give you the full amount uh, for 39%. I think, though, what you need to think about here is the decision-making here and the testimonials are going to be all about online and social media. So really the kind of experience you need here is in that area, not in the kind of old world that Gavin comes from in marketing. <laughs> and, you know, uh, 
you're the expert here on the product side. I'll let you run your own show. Gavin will be more like the ringmaster cracking the whip, you know? So question is, do you want to run your own show or do you want to be the clown in Duffy Circus here? Oh! <laughs> I, Paul, that, that's all very helpful to you because it just shows how, how desperate uh, Barry is. Uh, I'd love, I have to say, uh, Barry does know technology and I'm sure he could help you long distance from California uh, if you are willing to talk to him at 3 a.m. Yeah. Uh, whereas, yeah, he's right, I'll be 24-7. My dad was a teacher, my mom was a teacher, my grandparents were teachers. I understand the work that you guys do. I can help you make it successful. With identical offers from Barry and Gavin, it's time for Paul to make a decision. OK. Um, to, to be quite honest, right, and thanks a million for having me here today, I have so much faith in this project. And for me to give away 39% of my business, I believe in my product more than I believe in what you can do for me. But, you know, I, I, I would really like to thank you. Probably no point, but there's no way we can do anything on percentages. Well, I have to say, that's as pleasant a uh, get lost I've ever heard. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't even feel the smack in the face. Uh, um, yeah. Do you have a percentage in mind? I know this is going to work, and I know my projection. Thank you. We know that. Give us a figure. 10%. I know 100%, and I don't want to give any more away. Yeah. No, uh, Barry may very well be in, but I'm out. Thanks. Yeah, I think your, your maths is wrong there. I'm out. Thank you. It was funny when he said he, he, he met us an accountant for the first time last week, you know? I hope he meets a marketing person next week. <laughs> Paul, something very unusual happened in there in the den. I think everybody came away disappointed. Were you? Um, I suppose reflecting on the whole experience now, yes, maybe I was a little bit disappointed that uh, I wasn't able to uh, work out a deal with uh, Gavin or Barry. So do you think the dragons were just too greedy? <laughs> I wouldn't possibly, I couldn't possibly say that they were too greedy. It, it's just unfortunate we weren't able uh, to, to work something out. <laughs>